Generation inakuja ni sisi tunalidi nchi. Justina Wangui wa Mae, Root Party of Kenya. Ukiitwa deputy itika. Martha Wangari Karua, Azimio la Umoja One Kenya Coalition Party. Ungetaka tuseme wa Kenya wameamua. Rigadi Gashagwa, UDA. We are coming to bring in change. Ruth Wambui Musheru, Agano Party. Battle of the Deputies. The Deputy Presidential Debate live on the 19th July 2022, 5 p.m. at 9 p.m. Pitu na mekambu nipigia simu niombe msama. Forget I called. Shida gani huko kwanza kwenda kwa Christine Uskiagi? Ona bala, ona bala sasa. Kuna mtu anakuwa anga side yangu kwa hii family? Ukijana anatumia Gen Z baya sana. You know sometimes love can be blinding. Unaweza ongea na yeye? Mimi na Jen, you know I've always wanted a white wedding. Are you even sure you love him? What do you know about marriage na yako ta? Aende vizuri. Oh, Jen, you really don't know me. Huyu msichana vile ni bad news. Sura jua familia vizuri ama mwasahau. Najaribu kumuelewa kaka yake. Nene nilikufanya ukolekana dada. Uliko unampenda? Bado ninampenda. Sijaiwa cha kupenda babako. Na unampendea nini? Usinisumbulie mtoto niko na mmoja mimi na watoto wengine nje. Wewe ni mtu mzima sasa. Eh, kwa hivyo hao uh, leo na kinyangali katicho chochote ndio ufurahi, si ndio? Beatrice Chetkovic, the fastest woman in the world, becomes the world champion here in Doha. The World Athletics Championships is being hosted in Oregon in the United States of America for the first time ever from 15th to 24th of July 2022. An estimated 2000 base track and field athletes representing more than 200 nations will come together in a celebration of diversity, human potential and athletic achievement. Short races are not the only attractions. Marathon magnificent throws. Is it going to be long enough? Oh! It's a huge huge throw. Then outstanding jumps among other disciplines is expected as well. Although an immense task awaits them, our own team Kenya is adequately represented by resolute athletes ready to liven up Hayward Field at the University of Oregon. What a race. What heart. Oh my goodness me. So so close. Don't miss a single glorious moment live and exclusive on KBC Channel 1. KBC Channel 1, your true sports partner. Kupata police sheree kama sikiza tune kwenye simu yako, bonyeza star 811 star 758 hash. Kwa raya. Kwa nini unapigia mtu wakati ya sheree? It either two things iko emergency ama unamwitia sherehe usikuwa unasumbua raia mwingine wakati wa sherehe pana wacha watu wagule na wa drive safe pia mimi niguche kama ni sherehe niguche ah nagucha eh hey, wacha chukue simu pasi we nani wacha uchukue simu ya sherehe pana <laughs> upata police sherehe bonyeza star 811 star 758 hash star 811 star 758 hash all i do is win I wake up I win. I close my eyes and I win. We get a match with your girlfriend. Keep keep up on me. Come on, let's go. Keep running until the world stops spinning. Independent women come on, I let's get it. I'm a keep running until the world stops stops. Wow. You look great. Did you just come from the salon? Darling Abuja, braids that stay salon fresh no matter what.
Good afternoon. Thank you for creating time for us. You are in time for the lunchtime news. My name is Irene Mchuma Odem. On sign language interpretation, we have Anne Wangeshi. 24 days to the next general election and political leaders are not leaving anything to chance. We have able teams on the ground. This as Azmiola Umoja, One Kenya Coalition and the Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance are traversing the country ahead of the August polls. But for now, we begin again with the European Union election observation mission which has expressed confidence that the August 9th general election will be free and fair. The Union's election chief observer Ivan Stefanek says their initial assessment and also meetings with key stakeholders indicate the country will undergo a fair and smooth election process. In a press briefing, the mission revealed that it has been following keenly the campaign process and it is confident that the election will be above board. These elections will be important, I do believe, not only for Kenya but for the whole region and also for the democratic world. EU also indicated that it will have 48 observers across the country to observe and compile a report to be made public after the election. We will also observe uh, opening polling stations, the voting process and also how results are transmitted. Where we have a full-scale media monitoring, including in six vernacular languages on the radio stations, a full-scale social media monitoring, um, as well as looking at those specialist elements of technology in the election, um, the role of women in elections, the role of disadvantaged populations. The election observers say the initial assessment had pointed towards a fair and smooth process. The EU will be joined by a host of other observers, among them EGAD. For Lunchtime News, I'm Zainab Said. Two people have perished in an accident along the Athi River Namanga Road near Kajedo Town. One person is nursing injuries sustained in the Friday night accident which involved a motorcycle and a trailer. Kajedo Central Police Commander Daudi Lorolonyokwe, while confirming the incident, cautioned drivers to observe traffic rules. Namanga Highway near Kajedo Town. This is what is left of the motorcycle and trailer involved in an accident that claimed the lives of two people. One person was left nursing serious injuries. According to eyewitnesses, the driver of the trailer lost control, hitting the motorcycle head-on. <laughs> One person is recuperating at a Kajiado hospital with the bodies of the two people who perished in the accident being preserved at the Kajiado Referral Hospital. Residents are now calling for quick safety measures to be put in place on the road, which they now say has turned deadly. <laughs> Kajedo Central Police Commander Daudi Lorolo Nyokwe, while confirming the deaths, cautioned drivers to observe traffic rules. Safin Aching, Oma, Lunchtime News. Police in Vihiga County are investigating the death of a 65-year-old woman whose body was found dumped in a pit in Humodu Hamisi constituency. According to Area Assistant Chief Wilfes Pali, the woman's husband and son are persons of interest in the incident which has shocked villagers. Ruben Shumba and his son, Caleb Shumba, reportedly attacked the matriarch in a quarrel over money. Katika yale mauwachi kulingana na familia imetokezeo kuwa baba pia alichukumiwa na kitana yake na akakuwa eh, akasaidiana kwa kuwa huyo mama mwili ukasafirishwa hadi chini na ukatupwa kwa shimo ambalo walikuwa wamefanya utafiti wa zaapu kwenye kimo cha 
fit karibu 12 ndipo tukaripoti kwa polisi mara moja kijana mwenye ambaye aliwa maka kashikwa nilipoongea saizi ya police station serem anaendelea kuochiwa na leo wamemvia baba yake tena pia ambaye pia anaendelea kusaidia kwa uchunguzi zaidi nisikia wasichana wengine wenye watembea na bibi wakiongea huyu ya alikaenda akamwambia rafiki yake ah yenye tumefanya imejulikana imejulikana hasa nikashangaa imejulikana namna gani ikabidi nisikie tu niliposikia nikatafuta heshima nikaenda nikaipata kaanga tazama nikajua hapa kazi imefanyika nikarudi nikaka nyumbani si kutulia tena nikarudi tu huko mara ya tatu nikasema acha niende chukua mzee mta twende nimuonyeshe nipo muonyeshe nikamwambia sio chochote hapa kikia subjivu simu hii mama imeisemekana sasa aku hapa The government has maintained that it will not relent in efforts to ensure legal action is taken against politicians who violate the law as preparations for the next general election gear up. Speaking in Kerugoya, Kirinyaga County, Kibicho said security personnel in the area have managed to crack down on various criminal elements being used to undermine peace in the region. The PS says that the Ministry of Interior has embarked on county tours to assess the security situation ahead of the August 9th polls. kulikuwa na shida kidogo kidogo vile uh, kina Igoro kutembea na guns uh, wametuambia hiyo wamebeal naye uh, hii wanatembea na watu wako na marungu huku wametuambia hiyo wamedeal naye na wataendelea kuwachunguza tunajua ile mikutano wanafanya usiku uh, kuendelea wakitusi viongozi wengine wametuelezea pia hiyo uh, na wakati wakikishia wataendelea uh, ku deal na hao watu ile kitu wanataka ni kufanya vitu kama hizo ndio washikwe ndio ile umaarufu yao iende juu. Uh, sasa sisi hatuta participate kwa kupeleka umaarufu yake juu aendelee kuenda kwa hiyo ground na teleza. Hakuna uh, mtu atamsaidia. We have uh, to have peaceful uh, campaign period, electioneering period. We also have to have peaceful uh, country after the elections are done. And I think these are the issues that we are concerned about. Jubilee gubernatorial candidate in Isiolo County Abdiguyo has reached out to Arujan and Murule clans promising to include them in his government if elected in next month's general election accompanied by Jubilee's woman representative candidate Mumina Bonaya Guyo took his campaigns to Kilimani and Kiwanjani areas in Isiolo County where they are also cautioned opponents against propagating fear as a way of coercing minority groups. Nairobi County Assembly leader of majority who is now vying for Isiolo gubernatorial seat on a jubilee ticket Abdi Guyo took his campaigns to Kilimani and Kiwanjani areas to reach out to Ajuran and Murule clans of the Somali community. <laughs> Hii kaunti sio kabila moja. Hii kaunti ina makabila we? Serikali yangu itakuwa na Borana, itakuwa na Murule, itakuwa na, na Sakuye, itakuwa na Turkana, itakuwa na Sambu. Kila mu. Former Education Chief Administrative Secretary who is seeking for Isiolo County Woman Representative seat, Mumina Bonaya, and the gubernatorial candidate promised to safeguard the interests of the minority communities if elected next month. <laughs> In Migori County, ODM party chairman John Buddy was campaigning for Azimiolo Moja One Kenya Coalition flag bearer Raila Odinga in Nyatike constituency. For now, the next president of the Republic of Kenya is none other than Raila Amolo Odinga. This as the discourse on reducing high poverty index came out strongly in Busia County gubernatorial campaigns. Both ODM gubernatorial candidate Paul Otuma and his Amani National Congress party counterpart Sakwa Bunyasi pledged to invest more in agriculture sector. Tunataka tuwe mbele ya Kakamega, 
tukue mbele ya Bungoma, tukue mbele ya Siaya, vile Busia ilikuanga zama, zamani. Hapana kupelekwa wajiri, at least na compete na wajiri, na wajiri wako na shida tofauti na yetu. Lakini hata akiwa ni shule na mtoto wake yuko namba 44 out of 47. Utampongeza na kwa na utabasamu. Hapana. Utasema hata mtoto wangu imekuwa na mara gani? Hiyo ndiyo sababu kale na mimi tunatafuta uongozi wa Busia kuboresha hali ya uchumi ya Busia. Meanwhile a section of candidates vying in Kajiado County called on Interior Ministry to beef up security in the county. Gesho kiwashira Lunchtime news. Now, a Kikuyu section, uh, a section of Kikuyu elders now says the community has been set free from an oath alleged to have been taken in 1969. The Kiama Cultural Association Council Secretary General James Nene says the community was freed from the oath after three years of prayer. Nene claiming the oath was taken after the fallout between the first president of Kenya, Jomo Kenyatta, and the then vice president, Jeramogi Oginga Odinga. This now, according to Nene, allows the community to support a Raila Odinga presidency without fear of repercussions from the ancestors. The elders appeal to the Agikoyo to disregard all ill-intentioned persons, practices, policies, and politics designed to divide and deviate them from their common good. Fathers of the community, elders act in the best interests of the community. Yote amefanywa, waze wale wamefika kiwango, ile wazee wa miaka 65 kwenda juu mpaka moja na mbili wamekuwa wameshikana kwa hiyo mambo. Kwa hivyo ni mambo ambayo ilikuwa inafanywa na utaratibu na hii kufanywa sababu ya mtu ama watu fulani. Imefanywa sababu ya kufungua jamii. You are watching the Lunch Time News. We are taking a short commercial break. We'll be back with more. Stay with us. Do you have a new story to share with KBC? Get in touch swiftly on email news at kbc.co.ke or call 0723-892-654 or 0734-780-124. Are you an aspiring candidate in the upcoming general elections? Do you want your agenda and manifesto to reach your voters effectively? At KBC, we have the most comprehensive and credible online platform that has profiles of all prospective candidates. Log on to www.kbc.co.ke slash 2022 aspirants and let Kenyans know more about you, your past achievements, your manifesto and your development agenda once you get elected to office. Office. What's more, the website is easy to navigate. We will create your profile, post pictures and short videos with your campaign messages at affordable hosting fees. Log on to www.kbc.co.ke slash 2022 aspirants today and establish your brand authority as we lead towards the forthcoming general elections. Generation inakuja ni sisi tunalidi nchi. Justina Wangui wa Mai, Root Party of Kenya. Ukiitwa deputy itika. Martha Wangari Karua, Azimio la Umoja One Kenya Coalition Party. Tungetaka tuseme wa Kenya wameamua. Rigadi Gashagwa, UDA. We are coming to bring in change. Ruth Wambui Musheru, Agano Party. 
Battle of the Deputies, the Deputy Presidential Debate Live on the 19th July 2022, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Welcome back. You're watching the Lunch Team News. A section of political leaders in Cliffy County now claim the land in Chonyi area in Cliffy South constituency is capable of feeding the whole coastal region if adequate agriculture investments are made. Speaking at a rally in Bundacho in Cliffy South, the politicians led by former Malindi Member of Parliament, Lucas Maida, urged the residents to elect leaders who are agriculture conscious, adding that if necessary farming interventions are deployed, in the region, it will uplift the area's economy. Campaigns intensified in Kilifi County, this time round in Kilifi South constituency. Political leaders noting the immense food security challenge the county faces, promising to change the narrative. Chagua mtu kama waziri wa agriculture ambaye ni mwerevu amesoma uweke mabilioni ya pesa atuondole aibu ya njaa kilifi county. Kilifi County Governor Aspirant and Lawyer George Kithi said that agriculture reforms are key in ensuring food sufficiency, adding that if elected, he will reform agriculture in the region, promising to set aside 600 million shillings to revive the cashew nuts industry to boost the coast economy. <laughs> ndani ya bilioni 12 zile ninazozipata bilioni 2 ndo nazohitaji ili watoto wasome former kenya ambassador to zambia sophie kombe who is contesting for the kilifi south constituency parliamentary seat promising residents that she will revive agriculture in the region if elected on august 9th wawezeshe kuwapatia zile pipes kupamoja na generators vile vifaa vyote pembejeo zote zinazotakiwa za kilimo wafikishiwe their sentiments were echoed by other leaders who accused the current leadership of neglecting key sectors in Kilifi, promising to sort out the perennial food shortage in the county. <laughs> For lunchtime news, I'm Ben Troy Njua. President Uhuru Kenyatta and his Somalia counterpart Hassan Sheikh Mohamud have signed a mutual agreement that will allow the resumption of mirror exports and fish imports between the two countries. Kenya and Somalia have also agreed on the resumption of scheduled flights to Mogadishu in a deal that is aimed at improving ties between the two neighboring countries. President Uhuru Kenyatta on Friday evening inked a number of agreements with his Somali counterpart, Hassan Sheikh Mohamud. And I, I, I am very proud and happy today to, to welcome to Nairobi my dear brother and friend, President Hassan Sheikh of the Federal Republic of Somalia. At a joint press conference, the two leaders pledged to tackle common challenges affecting Kenya and Somalia. We are one people, one region, facing common challenges, and the only solution to those challenges is us working together. In recent times, there are a lot of challenges in the region and globally, and Kenya and Somalia has to work together to overcome those challenges. The two leaders also agreed to reopen their land border, which was closed more than 10 years ago, but remains a security threat from the Al-Shabaab militia. We have also agreed on the need to be able to facilitate again also the movement of our people 
through the re-engagement of Kenya Airways to be flying directly from Nairobi to Mogadishu and to facilitate that movement in order to facilitate business. The ever-growing economic relationship between Kenya and Somalia is indispensable and we play a very indispensable role in the fight together in the fight against the, the terrorist groups. Facilitation, diversification, promotion of trade and economic cooperation between the two countries and climate change management were also discussed at length. Besides the droughts caused by the climate change, which Kenya and Somalia has contributed less, but as a global partners, we are taking the full consequence of what has happened in places that are too far. We have agreed that we are both facing the challenge of a fourth consecutive year of drought, and again, the need for us to work together to ensure that we are able to assist those most affected. It was President Hassan's first visit in the country since he succeeded Mohamed Abdullahi Farmajo after winning elections in May. For Lunchtime News, I'm Ben Troenjue. Residents of Kisi Ndogo in Olmoran, Lake Kipia County, have resumed their normal lives a year after their houses were torched by bandits. Locals are now embarking on their economic activities after the tensions caused by the cattle rustlers who wrecked havoc in the area have long pacified. Tranquility now reigns in an area where tension was rife 12 months ago. Houses are being rebuilt and residents have taken up farming irrigated by a borehole dug by the Kenya Defense Forces that is now serving farmers and pastoralists alike. Residents are tilling their land, planting maize, beans and millet, hopeful that peace will prevail between them and their neighbors. Wakakuja wakaanza kuwalichoma manyumba, badai wakalisha mashamba, wakakula ile maindi ambaye tulikuwa nae. Sasa kwa vile likuwa hivata sisi malo yetu ikakua mbali kidogo. Selekali kaingiria ndani, ikakuja katichengea ima nyumba vile mumeona hapa, ikakue kutusukulikia mambo ya chakura, ikakue kutusukulikia mambo ya security, diyo naona ata selekali yetu hiko mnagumu. Village elders say that they have been meeting with the aggressors and they have since apologized for what happened last year. Tunaruona kama pira amanyi meansa kurudi kawaida, atu uchaona kama au nini majirani setu, Akacha fanya mambo ya kutokolosea dena, hata wenyewe, wanaomba amani, kwa sawa wanajua, mahali walikosea. Eh? Kwa hivyo sasa, tunaomba amani ya endere, kila wakati, hili turudi hile maisha ya kawai, ya kawai ya duikuwa naso. However, the residents say that it has been difficult for them to pick up from the losses they underwent and they have been forced to plant without fertilizers and certified seeds. They are now calling on the government to provide them with drop dressing fertilizer and aid in the construction of some of their houses. Sasa kwa hivyo, tunaomba serikali etuvikirie, eone kama etaesa kutusaidia, mborea, ata sieni, tukue kufanya drop dressing, Kwa hii maindi kwa sababu, hata maindi ya mekataa guso, kusonga kwa sababu wa mekosa mborea, na tena na kulinga na jua ya hapa, ni kubwa. The government hived off Kirima sub-county in Lake Ipia West at the height of the attacks to hasten security by ensuring that there are enough resources on the ground. Reporting for Lunchtime News, I'm Samuel Karioki. A section of residents in Malaba Busia County whose land has allegedly been grabbed by the Kenya Railways without compensation have threatened to seek legal redress. Philip Wekesa, a human rights activist in the area, and Johnston Kamili of the Apostolic Church Ministry say the government should compensate all those affected by the illegal move. Also affected are tens of families who accuse the government entity of encroaching on their ancestral land, led by the family of the late Paramount Chief Rafael Kesai. They say they will enlist the help of a local non-governmental organization to pursue justice in court. 
people have shown that they are bold. And we are ready as a Nyare Mkule Law and Justice Foundation, a foundation started by the former justice, a Nyare Mkule. We are ready to work with these people and proceed to court. They must get compensated for their rightful land. Sisi kama watetesi wa haki za kibinada mtu naona hiyo inaenda kinyume cha sheria ya nchi ya Kenya kwa sababu serikali ina haki ya kuakwaya shamba lolote kutoka kwa mtu yoyote na lazima kwa mkombezeti yeye pia akwe willing kuuza hilo shamba ndipo serikali kwe na matumizi ambayo inapangia Thank you for staying with us. Time for Channel One Sports News. Despite facing visa challenges, African 100 meters champion and record holder Ferdinand Munyala booked a place in the semi finals of the 100 meters race after finishing third in the seventh heat at the 2022 World Athletics Championships, which got underway last evening in Oregon, United States. Omanyala arrived in Oregon two hours before his race and had little time to prepare for the race. Mnyala left the country on Thursday night after visa delays and arrived in Oregon two hours before his race. Mnyala goes in three, Sonny Brown in seven, Munyai just outside him in eight and watch for Kone of the Ivory Coast. Despite the delays and little time to prepare for the race, Omanyara proved his pro race in race and clocked 10.10 seconds to qualify for the semi-finals of the race. Mnyala third from the right hand side. He finished third behind Abdul Hakim of Japan and Edward Osain Ketia of New Zealand. The semi-finals and finals will be held tomorrow, early morning. Meanwhile, Kenya Samuel Gatimba finished outside the middle bracket in 20 kilometers race, work finals after finishing fourth behind Japan's duo of Toshikazu Yamanishi and Koki Keda and Passes Kostram of Sweden. In other result, Leonard Kipkemoi Bet, Councillors Kipruto and Abraham Kibuot qualified for the finals in 3,000 meters steeple chase. He's closing, he's coming, what a race, what heart, oh my goodness me. Two-time Olympic 1500 meters champion Faith Kipigan won her hit ahead Jessica Hall and Fraweni Hail, who finished second and third respectively. African champion Winnie Chibet also made the semi-finals after finishing second in hit three behind Ethiopia's world indoor champion Gadaf Tisege. With the only title missing from her collection, Simpson takes the silver and Semenya outdips Laura Muir on the line. Tonight, Jacqueline Kipkoech, Purity Kirui and Sir Fanchespo will take the field in the 3,000 meters triple chase. All the action will be live on KBC Channel 1 Television. King Orimwangi for Lunchtime Sports News. English Premier League side Chelsea has signed centre-back Kalido Kulibali on a four-year deal from Serie A side Napoli. Meanwhile, Manchester United has completed the signing of Denmark midfielder Christian Eriksen on a free transfer. Completed the signing of Senegal International, Kalido Kalibali. The 31 year old defender joined Napoli from Genk in 2014 and made 317 appearances for the Italian side. His arrival at Stamford Bridge follows the departure of defender Antonio Rudiger and Andreas Christensen to Real Madrid and Barcelona consecutively. Kolibali made his senior debut for Senegal in September 2015 and has since earned 62 caps, captaining the team to victory at 2021 African Cup of Nations. Meanwhile, Manchester United has finally signed Danish and Brentford player Christian Eriksen. The former Ajax, Tottenham, Inter Milan and Brentford player has signed the three-year contract at Old Trafford. He is United's second signing under 